good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. We have a panel about uh, Internet of Things in Smart Cities. Then we have a two, two companies, and I will, I will put uh, different questions, five questions, and I think uh, with these questions, this, uh, this kind of guide, we can explain the point, the point of view about the uh, uh, smart cities. First of all, the first, the first question will be uh, the more general question, is the, some kind of uh, exposition about their company and the point of view of, uh, in general, of uh, smart cities. Uh, okay. my, my right is uh, Joaquin. Okay, so start. So, shall I begin? Four or five minutes. Yes. Okay. So, first of all, I, I want to thank uh, the Madrid Forum for inviting us. Uh, I have to say that it's a good experience. I, I expected that much and, and, and I'm very happy to be here because uh, I've heard a lot of words I, I, I wanted to hear, like customer experience, citizens, efficiency and standards and strategy, not technology, all along the, the conferences. So about us, Design It, we, we're a strategic design consultancy, uh, a global one. And what we do is mostly uh, add sense to the technology and products uh, through user-centered uh, user design. Uh, so that means that uh, we are the kind of, of guys who, who think what are the uses that technology uh, will have, either as a product or as a service. And, and here I have to admit that uh, when, was in a, the guy, when uh, Patrick asked for who were in the added value uh, slide, uh, like at the right side of the slide, if you remember his presentation, I was shy and I didn't raise my hand because that's what we do. We, we kind of differentiate the products of different companies to, to give value to the customer. So one of the major themes we have uh, in our company is what we call the future uh, citizen. And for us, this future citizen, which is related to the smart cities, is um, all it's about empowering them and giving them uh, capabilities to relate with the cities and the public systems. And uh, this citizen of tomorrow, this future, system, uh, future citizen for us is, is not like something very far, far away in time. It's kind of, when we say tomorrow, we, we kind of say tomorrow, Friday, because it's something that's happening and, and it's a, a demand that is uh, already on the market. So uh, for us, uh, rating IoT with the future to citizen, IoT for us is more of a medium, not an end. And we could say it's, it's kind of a, swing it up, it's kind of an environment that has uh, uh, little by little overcome everything and that we have uh, learning how to, to move on, uh, on it. But it's an environment, IoT, we have, uh, we, ha we are implementing most of our projects because everything is touched by, in, a, in a way or another by, by Internet of Things. Okay, Ignacio, yeah. do you put a view? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much um, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure for us to be here. Um, for, um, from our point, uh, our point of view, uh, Grupo Jimeno is the, is the holding company where uh, IoT Sense is a uh, spin-off inside where we are the um, IoT uh, division of Grupo Jimeno. We, uh, we started uh, two years ago and, and, and the holding group is uh, been working in, in Valencia area, especially in Castellón, where we are located uh, for more than 100 years. So um, we started you know, providing IoT uh, solutions to, to, any, uh, to all of the companies that uh, compound the Grupo Jimeno. Some of them are like uh, Faxa, who is uh, in charge of uh, supplying uh, the water to, to the citizens. Uh, Another is uh, Fovesa, who's in charge of taking care of all the waste management in the, in the city uh, of uh, Castellón and some other cities in Valencian area and so on. So uh, we started focusing on, on the citizens since uh, more than 100 years ago and now providing IoT uh, solutions to all of them. So we decided not only to bring uh, IoT solutions, which is uh, what we call verticals, uh, we also wanted to, to provide a complete uh, solution, a top umbrella, which is now uh, nowadays what we call IoT Sense Cloud Platform. So um, our vision with uh, IoT and smart cities is either uh, giving vertical 
have solutions to, to the citizen or to the private companies or uh, also provide a common platform to, to manage all the information that you receive from, from the sensors that you deploy in the city. Okay. Okay, well, the next question will be uh, if you can explain a, a brief explanation about your experience, uh, your own experience or the experience that you know very yeah. close in, uh, in applying IoT in, in small cities. Okay, so me being marketing and communications, I kind of have a broad knowledge about what, what my company is doing on, on every stuff, but particularly in that, I'm happy to say that uh, we have worked with most of the actual companies that have given a speech today. Uh, for instance, with Telefonica, we have uh, cooperated in uh, developing their philosophy of uh, smart cities during one of the, what they call the moon projects, this kind of the billion revenue projects. And we have also participated in the design and research of the smart home product, which is something is going to hit market on, on Latin very soon, which is connected homes and, and all that. Uh, for the BBBA, we have also help them with the project uh, that help us help help them to give sense to all the urban related data they have uh, with their famous project uh, 360 I don't know if any of you is, uh, come up with those and uh, right now in fact we are helping them with another uh, insurance related project with a heavy component of IOD uh, which is it's nice to see that all these different concepts of the mixes of the IOD with uh, banking and are not usually so evident, but, uh, but they, they, they are there. And um, also Gas Natural is one of, uh, of our usual suspects when we have uh, uh, mainly IoT projects and we have uh, cooperated with them also in several projects uh, the, with uh, energy management uh, using IoT systems. But as I said in the, in the presentation, more or less, everything we do, uh, is if, if it's not directly related Related with IoT, because not all our projects are IoT, of course, but but they have to take into account uh, a new environment, a new a new a new thing to work. It's kind of like when the internet came to to life. Uh, not all the projects of all the companies were about internet, but they slowly and and needed to start to take into account the existence of the internet. And now it's I feel it. I it's happening the same with all the projects, the strategic projects that my company is is, is working with. Thank you. Ignacio? Yeah. Um, I would like to give you a quick overview of uh, the a project that we have here in Spain and also outside internationally. Small. Yes. <laughs> quick, quick and small. <laughs> Fast uh, overview. Uh, the first one is the, the Smart City uh, project that we have developed in, in, in Castellón in a neighborhood called uh, Pau Bumbau. It's an area where, where um, 8,000 people live on a daily basis uh, and uh, we're covering a total area of uh, 2,000, two well, no, 220,000 square meters. Uh, it's a very crowded area of the city and we have deployed there uh, more than 20 different kind of sensors with uh, sensors related with uh, waste management, water management, park irrigation, uh, pollution, uh, what else, uh, meteorological uh, stations uh, and so on. So we decided to uh, give um, this uh, project to the city in order to provide uh, a quick uh, um, return on, on what they wanted to see, which is a city working in real time, um, managing under the umbrella of IoT Science Cloud Platform this, uh, different verticals like the ones that we have already deployed in, in, in Castellón. This is the national uh, project and for the international project, the latest uh, development that we are uh, finalizing right now, the, the, the deployment of uh, all the data loggers. Uh, we did a, a huge project in Saudi Arabia, uh, covering the 25 more uh, biggest city in, 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 the, in the country, like cities like Riyadh, uh, Mecca, Jeddah, Dammam, uh, etc. And uh, we have deployed there a sensor that is capable, it's a data logger, it's called the uh, watch meter data logger, made uh, fully uh, and produced fully by IoT sense engineers. Uh, it's uh, deployed in, in these cities and we are uh, reading the domestic uh, water usage of the, of the Saudis. Uh, 
uh, and we are reading that uh, domestic usage in a higher frequency that we are able to uh, differentiate if that Saudi is um, consuming that water for uh, washing the dishes, taking a shower, washing the hands, etc. That is the information that uh, the Saudi government wanted to, to have um, and also working, we are working there with uh, an M2M platform from one of the biggest telco uh, in the Saudi country and they wanted to have all this information in order to provide um, efficiency, efficiency rules to the Saudis because you know that the water is, is very scarce in that country and also very, very important for the government. Okay, thank you. The uh, next uh, three questions are more technical. The first one is, uh, is about the timing. What are your opinion, your, your perception about uh, what are the timing of the next, uh, the next approaches and when we can imagine the, the, this technology will be consolidated? Okay, consolidated is a heavy word. I mean, uh, <laughs> because uh, well, we, we have our, our opinion, we, our point of view is uh, technology-wise. We think uh, we have done more than enough. I mean, of course, technology will keep growing, and more solutions will be found, and most probably some technical breakthrough will be made uh, that change, it becomes a, a game changer again. But uh, we feel that. Um, the ball for saying that in that way is in, in our court, and, and we have the responsibility to to start to to move uh, this uh, technical thing and into a business and design uh, area. So we have to start to use all this data we are gathering. We have to start to to use all these sensors we have developed uh, and start making sense of them. Um, so, in reg regarding the, the question again, so I think uh, the time is starting now uh, of implementation I mean because you've seen you have said the uh, consolidation and and I cannot uh, avoid to think that uh, it will reach us always faster than we than we think and it will be mostly because uh, companies will be forced to do that because the people will will adopt uh, everything that is useful to them and IOT is the thing that will be useful for people will we, we will continue or by waves waves steps. okay I think it will be by waves I mean uh, I think it's it's going to be something kind of related with the rest of technologies when all the technology may be maybe come into into the game it will of course affect the, the IOT uh, for instance and that's because we've been talking before I, I told you uh, I think <laughs> augmented reality will be a huge boom uh, for for uh, IoT because uh, people will be able to interact better with all that kind of sensors and and stuff that will be all around the city. Ignacio, what you, would you do your opinion? Well, uh, from our point of view, our, our perspective in this. Um I talk from our experience, especially. Uh, what we what we see is that um, I, I totally agree with with Joaquin that consolidated is a very heavy word because especially it's a very new market, uh, the IoT and the smart city market in Spain. Now we have seen that the government has been pushing uh, with a big amount of money to uh, to to the different projects of smart city that Redes is managing. Um, and that is taking time to move for these projects. It's normal, and and here uh, I think because of the characteristics of the market, the Spanish market, that is more related with the public institutions, it's probably going to be, um, you were talking about um, official smart city projects, it's going to be uh, probably a little bit slower than uh, what we see uh, outside Spain. I think it's more related because outside Spain we are always working with private companies, and that makes uh, the flow of the, of, the, of the project goes a little bit faster. Uh, in, in our cases, I'm talking about of, of our experiences. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically it. Thank you. Well, we have a more difficult question now, a more, more deeper approach of the uh, Internet of Things. Uh, we can imagine a classification of Internet of Things in two different points of view. Uh, the the, the top-down approach, that means uh, the, the, the 
approach where the government like Germany or the sectors like the motor or health uh, introduces standards and create platforms and develops internet of things in this case in, internet, in, in smart cities and you have a, a different approach that we are usually are not explaining in, the, in seminars and congress that is the bottom up that is the, the approach where a lot of devices like uh, Galileo or Arduino or Raspberry or other, other devices very cheap are used by millions of uh, developers uh, perhaps uh, developers out of the uh, big stream and creating a lot of uh, de devices that are really working in small cities. What about what is your opinion about the coexistence of these two new approaches, these two different approaches, and the possible future in this uh, in this area? Yeah. So uh, design it is a user-centered company. So our approach cannot be other than we believe more into a bottom-up strategy. Uh, but when we, we mean bottom-up strategy, it's not only uh, individual users making like initiatives or using sensors, as you we we already commented. About about the Japan case with the nuclear uh, devices, sensors for the Fukushima uh, accident. But uh, I also believe uh, in the in the message of the other other people have, have said in this very stage, which is uh, other companies can also start small. I mean, and try and, and try to create or generate business. So even when our approach is this bottom up, and we believe this approach could be like the wild wild. West. I mean, very messy, very uh, conf confusive. Uh, uh, we also believe that it's also needed uh, a, a top-down approach, and they have to learn to to, to live together because at least you need uh, you need a, a level of standardization, uh, some basics to allow uh, that everything IoT connected uh, can communicate between themselves, and and that creates a, a, a basics that that allows a, a certainty of, of security. So. For us, it's a two-faced challenge. Uh, one, how do you create those rules that will allow uh, a playground uh, big enough so every actor can, can play, can have ball? And on the other hand, how do you foster these initiatives so not only individuals but private companies can can be enticed to 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 go to that playground and, and create uh, solutions to to. The, to, with all the data and all the services they, they already have, because that's the real feeling that there's a lot of uh, solutions in search of a problem. Yeah. What's your opinion, Ignacio? Yeah, interesting question. Um, from, Complicated. Yes. Well, from, from my point of view, I think uh, I, I don't, I'm not very sure if it is a top down or bottom up uh, moment. I, I truly believe uh, that it could be a mix of it. Uh, probably now is the time of um, of the business. Uh, let's let's make business. Let's uh, start uh, making devices. Let's uh, gather information and um, put that information in a platform where you can, uh, like we saw before uh, from IBM. Um, this is what is uh, IoT about. Uh, let's let's bring solutions to the market. Let's sell the solutions. Let them let, let them play. So. Uh, afterwards, afterwards, I mean, from our perspective, we are um, a spin-off of Grupo Jimeno, that was a very old uh, company. Now we are bringing new solutions to that company uh, in, in terms related to water or waste uh, that are um, like an old-fashioned uh, brand. Uh, now it's time to um, focus on the IoT and sell those devices and make the business. And then this is for me the bottom-up approach that, that, that this is the time now. And afterwards, we, we can start uh, doing the, the top-down approach in order to um, organize the market. But now I think it's time to, to uh, let the market grow. And then after that, we can, we can bring the rules to that market. Okay. Okay. If, if I might, there is also a reflection. Uh, we, we, I think we did also be, because this is a bit stage. We, we talk all about it uh, a bit before. Yeah, which is uh, how do these standards uh, appear or evolve? Because mm -hmm. even those standards, uh, if we if we make like a parallel with how internet uh, evolved, uh, I think IoT could follow a, a similar path. Uh, the internet standards were more or less uh, in 
in the slightest of the way, given from the top to the down, but they were mostly good practices that appeared from the bottom-up approach. I mean, de facto standards. De facto, mm -hmm. yeah, de facto standards, the things that work. <laughs> yeah, things that work, and the people uh, see the benefit of them and, and start using them until they're uh, industry standard and everyone uses it. So. Yeah. Well, the last, the last question. I am an assistant auditor and I am very <laughs> concerned about the risk, of course. Then my last question is, what about risk? What is your opinion, your opinion about the risk, the different kind of risk that you can imagine in smart cities, Internet of Things, and how to mitigate it, the, 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 the risk? Okay, how to mitigate it? Well, first of all, the risk. Yeah, well, <laughs> how to mitigate it is a really hard one because it's, it's quite technical. But uh, I will go for that after. Uh, but uh, the risk, I think the risk we all have in mind is uh, information uh, risk, uh, all related to personal data, security leaks, uh, the possibility of killing a cow using the internet, which is, uh, I love that one. Um, so at Design It, we think privacy, in fact, will be will be a key factor in the future. If you if you try to imagine uh, all the data you used to serve 10 years ago, it, it, uh, it was nothing compared to, to what people are used to share today. So what will be the data uh, people, companies, uh, corporations will be sharing 10 years from now? I mean, uh, we have to take that into account. So the, the, the risk will like grow potentially, but if managed properly, uh, it will become the greatest of the commercial opportunities we will ever have because uh, it's like a, the, the biggest of the pool of the of the big data but but then uh, this is something we all have in mind how to mitigate it how, how to mitigate that okay uh, if possible if possible <laughs> uh, i will say the first thing is with common sense and 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 with a push for the for the standards and, and to the to a common culture. But and do you agree that we can combine this question <laughs> with the previous one? Yeah. And, uh, would you have a standards? Perhaps it's easier. Yeah, so I will have a standards, but uh, which standards is, is the question? Because uh, that we, we have we have to let them grow. But the kind of risk without the standards is it's, it's huge. bigger. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, maybe something to start with, but maybe something that's that's why I say it's a challenge to define that playground yeah. because you. you you have to have a playground which have some kind of safety, safety uh, processes, but, but, but then it still have to be a playground. You have to be able to play inside. Yeah. And and there's another one. Uh, people usually don't think about it. Uh, we're, we're talking about IoT. Uh, everything is thinking. Everything is uh, interacting. So this can lead us to, to a real dystopia where try imagine a city full of, of uh, virtual reality advertisement that comes after you or uh, augmented reality scammers or do we really want to live in a city full of devices that no one knows really what they do uh, do we really want to have all these things around us I mean it can be a really uh, technological nightmare and, and this is not the first time we face a challenge like that I mean we've been worried about that uh, modern technology not being usable for a long time uh, there's even references uh, Jack Staty on, on the film Mon Uncle it's a, it's a full movie about a, a guy having problems with technology. So, and that's my final reflection, I promise. Uh, if, if we don't focus on people, we, we, we can find ourselves in such a future. I mean, with all kind of solutions being human proof instead of being uh, uh, human shaped, designed for humans, for people. So, how can I, how can I say that it's, it's, we are designed it human centered, of course. We, we, we do want this technology and for us is is inevitable but we want it not only to be uh, we use, but we want it to be also secure transparent and usable yeah and secure yeah uh, using your parallel uh, like mm -hmm. I follow with, with Ignacio with the, the parallelism within with the, the beginning of internet where internet was starting uh, perhaps we are in more or less the same the same step in internet of things mm -hmm. or in smart cities but 
the cyber attack teams are very bold and very aggressive and are a different position. <laughs> it's not it's not the same as the internet before, before in the 90s. Uh, the, the, the cyber attacks today yeah. are very sophisticated and very aggressive. No, I know, and, 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 and we will agree. The 90s were a more naive time, and in in all related to to digital assets. I mean, that's true. Yes, Ignacio. Yeah. Um, well, uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm not a technical guy, but I'm going to try to bring my point of view to the table. Uh, I think that um, probably, uh, well, in our case, what we do, especially with uh, items related with security, we like to maintain the same encryption from the sensor that we, either the sensor that we produce or the sensor that we buy to some other brand. Uh, we keep the same encryption from the first layer to the top uh, layer. So we, we try to bring all, always the, the same encryption. So this way, uh, it's not um, allowed, let's say, uh, an attack to, to the system. Uh, also, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're going to be facing problems like that. Uh, you have to bring uh, firewalls and some other uh, tools to, to your um, platform, especially when you're um, managing data from, from citizens and from a municipality, for example, something like that. Uh, it's always about uh, having uh, good professionals in your company that are taking care of, of, of these uh, issues. And, and also, I am... Um, from from my perspective, I think there is another point that we will change that will change uh, the the internet, uh, which is going to be the uh, the machine learning. I think machine learning is, is starting uh, another uh, another stage of the of the internet, and, and soon uh, some other pro a lot of processes will be done by by. Um, big machines uh, like, I don't know, from IBM or some other companies, uh, especially in Silicon Valley, are, uh, they are um, moving forward this, uh, from this uh, market uh, very, very fast. And also in our company, we are starting to bring solutions uh, related with artificial intelligence. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your opinions. And I don't know if there are yeah. questions. In fact, I would love if someone will bring the, the yeah. Like just one for, for a second. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to recommend you a very old, old friend of mine. Uh, his name is uh, Platon. Uh, well, you know that he wrote a, a book I haven't read, but which is uh, The Republic. And it's very interesting to see uh, uh, that he thought about the smart city 2,000 years ago. And he had a reflection between uh, the city, the governance, and the technology. And I think uh, in your companies you should hire a philosopher. Because I think this is the best person to talk to a politician. Because I guess that when you talk to a, to a politician, you talk about sensors, you talk about um, connectivity, you talk about uh, absolutely boring things. And these people, they want to have a better city. And I think we have an answer to this 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Well, I, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do have uh, philosophers, ethnographers, and half our staff is, is uh, people who is devoted to think. I mean, our, our company, as I said, is, is uh, all around giving sense to the, to the technology. I mean, it's okay for you to have a huge technology, but we don't sell like technology solutions. We, we sell services, we sell products, and we sell experiences, and, and we build them with the, with, with the companies that hire us. So I do agree fully with you. I mean, you, someone said here before, I think it was you, uh, it's, it's not about technology, it's about the strategy you have, it's about the thought you give about the technology. There, there are technologies that are 10 years old and that, and that have still so much potential. I mean, look what we did with SMS, I mean, and, and we are still... Uh, finding new ways to, to still use it and, and look what we are doing with just uh, chat and what China is doing with, with only a chat interface and, and, and for us when we, when we talk to politicians uh, which are very hard very hard target for us because they don't have like the time or the or more of the time the, the energy to, to push forward uh, real uh, projects uh, we use that that kind of uh, you have
have to focus on your citizens because the, for us we have a, a full uh, branch of our company which is devoted to what we call the city and citizens, which is uh, how the city relates with the citizens and the and the businesses inside the, the same city and between them they build the city, they 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 create the city. So governments are there to facilitate that, but the, the real city is, is that, and, and that's what we try to to sell to politicians. <laughs> Another question? Um, hello, I'm Iñaki Molina from HP. Uh, one question, you were talking about products, uh, making the technology real through products. In the smart cities in 2016, in your opinion, what are the new products we are going to see? Are going to be around parking, about lighting, about waste management? I don't know if you can give us some hints. You, you want to me to go to, for that? Well, uh, to both, if possible. Okay. You want to start? Uh, I, can, uh, I can explain just. From, from our experience, what we are uh, receiving is uh, a lot of inputs from uh, parking, uh, smart parking uh, solutions for, for cities, uh, smart park irrigation also for the cities. Um, what else? Uh, lighting. It's, it's always uh, a very, a very uh, constant item and solution that they demand. And, and, um, and so others like like the one that uh, designed it uh, is, uh, is facing uh, is a solution related with the, the open data and, and um, focus more on the citizens like a open and transparent uh, portal uh, to get all, all the data from the citizens and this is a, a an aspect that uh, IoT Sense is not focused on but uh, we know that they um, especially municipalities mayors and and they want to um, they want to focus more on, on this uh, for, for the coming years. I see facts. Yeah, I, I do agree. We have uh, cooperated with uh, uh, Malaga City uh, in some of their initiatives, and I think uh, the, the ones you have in mind are the ones we are going to see. I mean, something related to parking, something related to lining, uh, all that kind of stuff. But I think the next uh, evolution uh, of uh, smart cities is, uh, will come from the very users. I mean, I have uh, friends that are also entrepreneurs, and, and they're building their own initiatives based on smart cities or on IoT. Like, uh, you, you remember the one you see about uh, the bumps in Panama, the, uh, the Twitter bumps? Uh, so there's this guy who's built a, a, a full app, it's called Hackity, and it's all about enabling, enabling the citizen to, to detect uh, flows in the city and, and create forums to either denounce it to the, to the whole or to work with with the co-citizens, with the neighbors, to, to solve it. So I think it will be that kind of that that kind of initiatives in the, in, a, in a grand scale. I think the obvious one, the one who have been presented here with Telefonica, BBVA, all those will slowly be dripping. And if you think about that, some of them are already in place. I mean, you can know when a bus is, is going to to pass by in Madrid, and I expect that to be improved and and, and to be expanded to the metro. So you. You can go down to the metro when the metro is going to come, not when you expect it to be. And uh, but I think that the real next steps are going to be from from below. Any question? Hi, this is Jesus from Fundación Tic Salud. So in a scenario, in an IoT scenario in which data is generated in multiple sites, multiple locations, and mostly generated by users, how you deal with uh, quality and reliability of data, or whether we should focus on that, or we just have to trust the data like uh, by heart? Say. Okay, that's, yeah, that's the best, best question you will ever have. Uh, that's the big problem of the big data. I mean, and that opens a new, a new universe, universe of possibilities. I mean, what's and, and uh, we've been talking about that in the in the last talk about uh, we have quality data, but then uh, we have raw data. We have to analyze that. Uh, 
for me, that opens also new possibilities because, as I said, uh, the technology is there. We are like taking huge amounts of, of data. We have them. We have we have this data. We we know like how how much water is the uh, community spending, uh, how much sun is this uh, plant receiving. Uh, we, we know all that, and, and and this is a great question, and and I guess it even opens uh, new commercial opportunities for people dating to 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 be in there and and who who will be responsible to analyze all that data and and giving them giving that data sense uh, i mean it's it's like an open field you have all this data and and a lot of opportunities here like what can you do with uh, the data you have on your fridge when your fridge is a smart one and uh, maybe uh, your car what can you do what 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 can you do with all the data you you have on that fridge and by selling those data to a supermarket so the supermarket can know what do you eat and and combine that with with the intelligent uh, artificial intelligence that can predict what what will you eat tomorrow better than you or or that can help you be a, a health be a health uh, solution to recommend you what you should eat but try imagine a future where you open your fridge and oh, okay this is what i eat today so you, you and, and 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 you don't even fill your fridge it's someone who comes and and brings you the food so so for me it's it's a fantastic question because it's, i think is the next the next big thing the